Welcome to Paranormal UK Radio with your hosts, Irene Allen Block and Mark Johnson. Welcome to Paranormal UK Radio, the flagship show on the Paranormal UK Radio Network. I'm your host, Irene Adam Block, and joining me tonight is Mark Johnson, my co-host, Mark Johnson. Wow, I'm sitting here impressed. Oh, you remembered that's my good. name. That helps. <laughs> I said, didn't I? I said, you know. Devil, you would yes. never ever let me forget that the fact that I forgot your name once on air, <laughs> <laughs> or my I title, or like you know if I exist. But hey, you know here I am. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. So that was Mark Johnson, the person that will never ever let me forget the fact that I forgot his name on air three or four weeks ago. Yeah, we've only been working together for what seven years now. But no, that's seven okay. years or yeah, seven years together mm-hmm. in radio and uh, everything else, publishing and uh, paranormal research mm-hmm. and uh, and whatever our next venture is going to be, which we know we're just not going to say yet. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. We, know. we know, we know what we're going to be up oh, to yes. next. Yeah, we've got lots uh, of lots of brands in the fire, and some of them are starting to get really smoking hot. So, yeah, we're like the dynamic duo. That's right. What, what Him and I, her, the naughty boy and the naughty girl from the world of the paranormal. Yep. Yep. But definitely the naughty boy, anyway. They yeah, know, well. They used to stir everyone up. Anyway. Right, so we've got an interesting night tonight. Again, Mark, haven't we? We've got Ronnie and Philip Kinsella from Twin Souls Radio. Now I'm going to repeat that. Twin Souls Radio on the... Paranormal UK Radio Network. What date and time, Mark? The last Thursday of every month at uh, 8 p.m. Greenwich Mean and uh, Eastern Standard Time. But Ronnie and Philip, welcome to the program. How are you gentlemen tonight? Uh, This is Philip. I'm uh, well, so thank you. And um, I'm glad to be on the show. Thank you for having me. (laughs) I'm Ronnie. How are you there? Yep, I'm here. Thank you very much for having me on. It's a privilege again, as usual. Ah, that's good. That's good. It's always lovely to have you two boys on. You brighten my day. After a day of working with Mark, you're you're a ray of sunshine. Oh, I think the dynamic four. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Dynamic four, yeah. Okay, so what are we going to chat about tonight then, Mark? Well, w- there's just a lot that we're going to cover tonight. We don't have one particular subject, but we are going to be talking a lot about things going on in the UFO community, uh, some uh, brand new news that has come out, uh, some new recent discoveries, and just some other things uh, getting into talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is just high strangeness. Really hard to classify this weird stuff. And we already talked about a couple things off the air, but now we're going to talk about things going on the air. So uh, why don't we start this off? And we, we were mentioning about what's big in the news this week is that in Peru, there was a mummy found. Now, if people who haven't seen Peruvian mummies, you can, you know, Google it online, and the uh, the ancient Indian cultures down in Peru, because of the really dry climate, they they used to bury their mummies in these open pits in a in a kneeling position, uh, like with almost like their arms wrapped around their legs, and they still have all their coverings, and they're very well preserved, generally minute, because of well, the... they buried their mummies. Or they buried the bodies. Well, they buried the bodies, but they were naturally mummified. What beforehand? Uh, afterwards, because oh, okay. of the climate. Oh, yes, I know. Sure. Burying mummies. I should have clarified that too. But uh, yeah, and and they also had a wonderful technique of mummification, which uh, most of the scientific community are still puzzled by, in terms of the longevity of the tissue that's been kept by the um, you know within the tomb. So um, this is a new case that's come up. I, I understand, Mark. Well, yes, there was a mummy found that is highly unusual because the, the this uh, 
they're calling it an alien mummy, which is, of course, jumping to conclusions. However, it is highly strange. It's a humanoid, almost looks human, but yet there's aspects of the skull that uh, aren't right. And there's also the, um, the, the fact that the fingers and toes are greatly elongated and there's only three each. Three fingers on each hand, three toes on each hand. Very, very long. Now, uh, I've been trying to follow this, and uh, what's interesting to me is they are taking tissue samples. They're trying to do some DNA analysis. They have run put this thing through x-rays. Now, some, some debunkers are coming out saying, oh, it's just a human skeleton because it has the right number of bones in the, uh, in the vertebrae and whatnot. But yet, the hands with these three fingers have six bones in each finger where humans only have three. So there's something, it's highly, highly unusual. Uh, also looking at the, at the, uh, the skull itself, I find intriguing because, now granted, this is still a mummy with the skin and muscle tissue and everything is still underneath, but very dehydrated because of the weather. And yet uh -huh. um, the... W the side where where you usually have the ears and the cheekbones just don't seem to correspond exactly to human physiology. Mm. Um, well, yeah, there is. Um, there's the contention, isn't there, that a lot of these strange elongated skulls and deform. Well, we scientists have called deformities, but we don't believe that. Um, is all through not just Peru but Egypt as well too, and I think there was a case where there was some discovery of, of these uh, these um, elongated body uh, skulls with uh, strange bodies that were dug up around the Giza plateau many years ago and then hidden by the scientific community. Um, so you know that interpretation of what you're describing with uh, the obviously the mummy in Peru does does qualify for the the appearance of what we commonly refer to as perhaps the grey or it could be some form of cross-breeding program that occurred. Um, it's, it's interesting speculation, isn't it? It is. And, you know, what's, what's fascinating with the photos of this mummy, as they're calling it, first of all, it's all white, uh, which is highly unusual because most of the mummies coming out of Peru are fully clothed. They have hair. You still have their bra hair in braids. They still have the skin and the skin cult, um, texture, even though it's dehydrated and mummified, is, is a dark brown. And yet this mummy is pure white. It almost looks chalky, like it's covered in plaster of Paris. Completely bald, no hair at all. The... Um, it reminds me, Mark, of the bodies that were dug, dug up from Pompeii. But those weren't that really the museum there. But those weren't those bodies in Pompeii were actually plaster of Paris. What they did in Pompeii is they dug holes in the ash and they found these like uh, openings in the ash, and they reached in and pulled out human bones. So then they got the idea to start filling them with plaster, and sure enough, they formed perfect replicas of the people in the last position they were in when they died. Um, yeah, I've, I've got a picture of this uh, 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 mummy, and it's quite intriguing because the, the toes are so absolutely long, and the forearms are grossly extended. I mean, it is really unusual looking at it. I mean, it looks really, it does not to me look human at all. <clears throat> It's humanoid, definitely. You know, it's round, round eye sockets, but even the way the face, the face looks unusually flat. There's no, yeah. brow, there's no brow ridges, like you normally. Small see. nose, small to non-existent nose, but almost a regular sized mouth. Uh, now, this could be a type of human. Okay, it could be a human, either deformity. We don't know, and and they're supposedly doing testing now. There are, there are a few things that are causing some red flags for a lot of people in the media out there, is the fact that the people who found this mummy are being very tight-lipped on where they found it. All they say it was found around Nazca, outside of where the Nazca, the famous Nazca lines are, uh, but they're not saying where they found it. 
and and there's a lot of gaps to be filled in. Is it the only one found? There, there. So far, there's not a lot of information coming out about that. Um, there's also. I, 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 I personally believe that a lot of the these um, these finds, these archaeological digs. I mean, we have heard many times before that the scientific community actually, you know, suppress them and and they're they're hidden away from the public conform with the model of man that we've been sold, i.e. in Darwinism or, you know, our ev evolution from the apes. Um, and, I, and I believe that they hide them because it would upset the complete model of, of, um, of what's been made available to us and what we've been led to believe. So I, I'm under the, the, the firm belief that there are probably more of these um, and that's why they're keeping the location secret so they don't get other people going up there to you know, take a look themselves and start digging themselves. Well, it's like here in the United States, where back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, we had author Jason Gerald on, and who's done a lot of research into the mound cultures, where they're finding these giant human skeletons. And what happened? The Smithsonian came through, gobbled them all up, took them, hit them away, and now there's no evidence at all that we ever had giant people here in America because they're hiding the evidence. Even though all that's what I can't understand about this. If this was an alien, they'd be out there getting that. Well, unless you know what the Smithsonian's are like, they plumb and take plumb and dinosaur bones. But but they take the they take it in America. The Smithsonian is an American United States government entity. Oh, this is in still in Peru. Is this it? is down in Peru, which is South America. Oh, so they haven't moved it to America then? No, no, no. In fact, uh, it's being examined in South America, and is one it, of. It's and one of the other controversies surrounding this is that uh, Mexican journalist Jaime Musan is very yeah. much involved in this. Now, oh, I've, yes, yes. I've never personally had a problem with Jaime Musan, but a lot of researchers uh, feel he's a, he's a fake and a fraud because some cases, things he's been involved in, like the notorious Roswell slides, turned out to be nothing. And um, so they automatically point fingers and call him a fraud. I don't necessarily think that's the case. I think sometimes some people, when they're so involved in something and so so intent on proving it that they skip a few scientific steps and don't examine things correctly enough and they're just too eager to present things to the world, then they get caught with their pants down. So... I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a hater of Jaime Bassan. By well, any I don't means. I don't even know who he is. I, I I I do agree with you there, Mark. With him, he's done some really brilliant work, and I know that his his program goes out once a week out there. And I and I also remembered seeing a documentary with him, with another chap who they'd caught some UFO footage, and and it was something to do with um, he really believed in this this particular case, and and um, it, when they examined the mobile phone, all the times were wrong, and he actually went up to the bloke and said to him, you know, are you are you are you a fraud? Are you a fake? Tell me. So I can understand that you know. For from a, um, a perspective where he's seen as an authoritative figure on the subject, um, that when these things do happen, he's got to try and save face somehow. And and I guess it happens to all researchers where they, you know, they, they kind of like get slipped up by someone else and it's like trying to save face um, afterwards. And of course, everyone will jump on the bandwagon. There, there, a lot of people are waiting for a lot of researchers and authors to trip up um, or documentary makers, whoever, to slip up so they can go in for the kill. And once again, we get to that, that, that whole thing where everything's all buried and, you know, to sway public attention away from what's really going on. So I, I agree with you, Mark, there totally with uh, uh, Jamie Massani. He's, he's a good man. Yeah, and also, 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 sorry, it also says that the organs of this haven't been removed. No, they haven't done an autopsy on it because to remove the organs, they'd have to cut the whole thing open. And no, when, that's the difference between it being a mummy and whatever it is, because it's still got its organs inside. But that's not exactly the case, because some forms of mummification, they don't necessarily remove the organs. And oh. there's there's also natural processes of mummification, where if, if a creature dies yeah. and it's in an arid climate and there's certain minerals in the rocks or in the ground nearby. Well, they fall into a peat bog, yeah. Yeah, they can be naturally mummified too with all their organs intact. And uh, yeah. that could be the case, at least partly the case for what's going on here. But see, we're, we're not going to know anything really 
until they get some DNA come back. I, that's the one thing that I'm waiting for is wait for them to come back with the DNA results. But I'm going to tell you something too. This day and age, it doesn't matter. They can come back with the DNA results and say, this is not human. And do you know how many people will pay attention to it? Practically nobody. That's right. They've got us all dumbed down and brainwashed to automatically reject everything as a hoax or a fraud and everybody goes about their lives and ignores yeah. yes that that's absolutely true because it's like youtube there's so many um fake f uh, footage being put on there and so much uh, disinformation um that they've now calling people like researchers or people who are interested conspiracy theorists because it causes so many arguments and i think the powers that be are enjoying every minute of this because we're now attacking each other over footage that we can't actually ascertain if it's genuine or not this is the trouble just like this uh, this mummy mummified uh, corpse they've found you know it, i agree with you mark yes so they won't take a blind bit of notice one way or another and this is a sad fact about it mm -hmm. it's an interesting point i make on this is that um uh, to do with youtube about this footage or people not taking a damn um is uh, i've watched something of these ufos passing overhead and i knew damn well that it was fake i actually could see that it was fake but i recently had an email from someone saying you prove to me that that is fake and I actually had to write back to him and say well you proved to me it's genuine so it's com it's caused a complete a a war with with ourselves about whether it's genuine things are genuine or whether they're not you see this is the trouble we're in at the moment especially well, with clever effects and, and this is the this is the status of society today we have become such a divisive culture that it's you're with us or against us culture to one side or the other whether it's politics whether it's you know paranormal groups ufology groups everybody is taking sides and they're bitterly defending those sides and i think a lot of it you'd mentioned uh and i agree not only you know people are pointing fingers and nobody will take it seriously anymore but I think a lot of this was done on purpose. I think there have been certain individuals uh, and certain quote unquote lettered agencies involved that throw out a lot of these hoaxes to yeah. to just get people to not believe it. It's so much easier to get people to not believe something than it is to get them to believe it. Yes, that's right. And so if you can go about, there's so much evidence out there about how strange our world really is. And the average person on the street is absolutely ignorant to it, or they don't yeah. want to believe it, whether because of their religion, because of they believe what they see on the news, they believe what the government tells them. And, um, you know, unfortunately, those of us who are, quote unquote, awake uh, are considered fringe or even, like you said, conspiracy theorists or whack jobs. <laughs> That's absolutely true. Yes, I, I think. That uh, the other thing that I, I would would say here is that the powers that be through the introduction of technology now, the well, the toys that we're given through the um, technological departments, and I, I will call them toys because they don't really benefit us in in the extent towards the planet's ecosystem or in regards to health issues or you know um, energy. Um, that the powers that be are absolutely, and I agree with Ronnie, and I'm sure you'll agree as well too, that they're absolutely, you know, laughing themselves into the ground because they, they can see that the researchers, because the powers that be have done, they've done their own research and it's all top secret kept away and they've got that hidden. And they, all this stuff that researchers are trying to fight to say, look, something's going on, wake up, look and see what's going on. And they know what's going to happen now. And the introduction of like YouTube and Facebook and all these different devices that they have is now created a huge divide. I mean, you only have to look at politics to see that, <clears throat> how they get people to fight against each other. Um, especially where we've had in here about the, you know, the Brexit and everything going on and, and how that, the, the, the mental... Um, the attitudes of that was so destructive when, when you know, it was all 
coming out and how people were turning against each other. It was an incredible thing to see even at work, seeing people bickering with other people about their opinions and what they believe to be true. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's not even leading into the paranormal subject where, you know, it, it goes even deeper. So those people at the top of the chain are really, they know what they're doing. They, they've got control of the chessboard and they've put us in a checkmate position. And that, that's, that's where they got us. But yes, but also, Philip, you have to understand also, that's right, about the arguments this enforces, especially about Brexit, the absolute horror that we've gone through, the bitterness. It's that they don't even have the facts. They'll read something on the news and believe it, or they'll see one side and believe it. It's no different from things like this, the, the mummy that has been discovered or UFOs. People don't have the facts. Some of them are arrogant and believe they have all the facts and they actually stamp you down with them. But by God, this is the problem we're faced with. You're right. Yes. It's it's discouraging, too, because in my opinion, most of this, look, you guys deal really heavy with the Brexit drama. Over here in the States, we're dealing with the po political drama of right versus left and the insanity that people are just delving into. And you're right, uninformed just working purely on passion, listening to whatever the mainstream media says and, and taking it as gospel. And, but you know what? It's, it's also a great distraction from the truth of our existence. Because let's face it, you want to argue about politics, okay? Whether Bre uh, England and the UK should remain part of the European Union or not. And everybody has an opinion for one way or another. Whether or not you're over here and you support Donald Trump or you actually think he's the Antichrist and you want him dead, which now so many celebrities and people are openly calling for him to be killed. I mean, just because you don't like the guy. I mean, come on. That's sick, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. just, it's sick. Yeah. Look, it is. You know it's what? terrible. You know, I always said you and, don't kill your leaders. Well, you know, we're not going to get into a political discussion. It's just the... It's just the idea of this radicalization where people are so passionate that they want to beat up with violence or kill anybody who disagrees with them. But and you know something? But Which look, is happening in this mummy case. But also You've look at the all the people that are for it and the other people that are against it. Mm -hmm. But look what they're distracting us from. They distract everybody to the point now that nobody actually wants to take a real serious look at the issues. And if they yeah. started looking closer at all of the phenomenon that is being documented, that's happening all around us every single day, if, if science would take it seriously, if more people would take it seriously, they would suddenly see how truly, wonderfully weird and incredible the rea our reality is and our entire idea of reality is absolutely false you know yeah and, and and i believe that it's like going back to the roswell case the most one of the one of the most famous ufo events in america when it started the whole ball rolling is that you know although there's a lot of controversy around that that case it is so fascinating because it won't die and even you know most of the people that are involved in the the initial operation and recovering and autopsies you know, had to speak on their deathbeds to reveal the truth. And, and I, as I said, you know, it would be absolutely fascinating to have spoken to those, uh, the people who were originally involved with that case. And, and I, I think from Roswell's first inception and of how the military then turned the whole thing around, people spill, still spill the beans. And, uh, and I think that's wonderful that, you know, even to, up to this day still, 70 odd years later, it's still raging, which tells you unequivocally that there must be some truth in the matter. Definitely, period. And yet, but the, I also believe that Roswell is overhyped and it's used as a smokescreen. So many people concentrate on Roswell that they completely ignore or they're unaware of all of the other crashes and incidents that have happened both before and since Roswell. Oh, the, absolutely, the, yes. The crash at Roswell itself in 1947, uh, in July 1947, was one of several crashes that happened in the area. It wasn't just one yes. ship. There were several nope. within the yep. same time period. Or was that, I didn't even know that. Yep. There were yes, there were several, so. but you only hear about the one. And th yeah, you do. Wasn't, wasn't there three of them? There was at least three, yes. 
and uh, or you don't hear about the Kecksburg incident in uh, Pennsylvania that much, where one crashed in the 60s and the government came in and scooped it up. But there were a lot of eyewitnesses around and people still talk about it. And yet none of those incidences, you know, even Rendlesham Forest, which we're going to talk about more in depth here uh, very shortly, uh, as famous as that case is, especially for the UK, it still kind of pales in comparison to Roswell. You can go to the average man in the street and mention Roswell. Uh, well, Roswell is the granddaddy of it it's all. It's the isn't granddaddy it? of it all. And, you know, people like uh, Dr. Stanton Friedman, you know, he's made his entire career talking about Roswell ad nauseum. You know, it's mm. like, okay, yeah, we nobody's going to really know. Everybody thinks they can come up with new information on it. But the fact is, most everybody who dealt with it is dead. We have a lot of conflicting information and stories. So we know something happened. We know the government covered it up. But now we concentrate so much on it that we're ignoring all this other evidence out there, of all this other, these other things that have happened. Yeah, so, again, that's why very, very cleverly you say this smoking gun. I did read somewhere that, you know, in order to deflect public attention, you've got to make them, you know, look somewhere else um, uh, as from where they should really be looking. And they do that quite a lot of the times, like, you know, not going into too much detail, but 9-11 as well, too, a smoking gun and many other incidences that have happened, you know, when everyone's focused on that, when something else is going on that no one knows about. Well, yeah, that's like when when nine eleven happened. It was what like the day or or a couple days before they came out and announced that that several billion dollars from the defense budget just happened mysteriously disappeared. They didn't know where it yeah. went, and then suddenly the next day, boom, nine eleven. Everybody forgets about it. Yeah, and and in terms of like you know people trying to sway other people's attention away from researchers, I mean there was a uh, there is a, a doctor, Dr. Judy Wood, who wrote a book called Where Did the Towers Go, and um, she's she's connected with um, Andrew Johnson, and and her book was they tried to ban her book, um, and uh, you know if you read that she's a scientist and she just she dealt specifically with the facts but you know no one wants to look at those facts they want to uh, and, I, and I also believe Mark correct me if I'm wrong but a lot of the original footage during the 9-11 attacks um, that was aired just just prior to this happening have all disappeared there is still some footage out there that was shot by some documentary filmmakers and a couple of news crew of the planes hitting the towers that's still available but what has been classified and covered up was the so-called quote-unquote plane that flew into the pentagon which they they instantly grabbed all of that footage classified it nobody's ever seen it yet there is one grainy piece of footage out there that was taken from a security camera at a gas station across the way that, oh, yes, sh that yeah. clearly shows a missile, missile. hitting missile, yeah. uh, the Pentagon. And in fact, mm. um, Irene, you and I, what was about last year or something, we were looking at something about where a cruise missile could be launched. And uh, sure enough, there's an, from, yeah. there is an Air Force base right across Arlington National Cemetery. I mean, there's an, uh, yes. There is a base there, and it's right within the line of sight of where the so-called plane hit. And, yeah, and it, it could have come in low because there was no buildings yeah. or anything to it would just be fly, in it the would way. Fly, they launch it, it flies 30 seconds at treetop level and hits the Pentagon. Hardly anybody would see it. And that's the other thing is, too, with uh, the Pentagon. Where's the damn plane? Where's the engines? Where's the landing gear? Where's yes. any of this? That, that's the, right. Where's yeah. the luggage? Where's the clothes? And where's because the bodies? People, I, yeah. where's, the footage you just that? see, I think the footage you just see is just a bang, and that's it. There's no, there's no wingspan. There's no, no. Um, um, there's no hull. There's nothing. It, it, though, well, there's a hole. There was a big hole in the side of the building, yes, but there was no place for the wings to hit. They disappeared. That's right. Yeah. You know, That's... and and yet they try to tell us, oh, yeah, terrorists flew an airplane into the Pentagon at, at ground level, treetop level. Guys who just took a few classes could do that. No, okay. no. Um, no. Strange. Sa it? Same with the uh, the plane that disappeared in the uh, field in Pennsylvania, which which n the, there's been no wreckage ever recovered. If there was, they got it under wraps. They don't allow anybody in the area to go near it. 
because they don't want anybody. Which one was that then, Mark? That was uh, Flight 93, United 93. They actually made a movie about it where supposedly the passengers revolted against the hijackers and and um, rioted. And Oh, yes, I remember the, that. The official yes. story is they crashed the plane in this field rather than, you know, let them be taken over. Um, but uh, there's no evidence that there's any plane whatsoever that hit that field. Ever. I remember well, I tell hearing... you what, when that plane went down at um, Lockerb- Lockerbie, mm-hmm. that made evidence in the ground. Yep. I tell you. It was... Oh, the, the jumbo jet. Yes, that's yeah. right. It did. Yes. God, it scooped that ground out like it was nothing. Yep. Yeah. But you're it not... exploded in midair as well. It exploded in midair and mm. made all that mess. Yep. I mean, yeah. it, it was atrocious mess. Yeah. yeah. And what but about still flight... damaged the ground? Yeah, what about flight MH370? I mean, that's all very suspicious as well. Talking about high strangeness and how, you know, we've got so much um, equipment, uh, satellite surveillance uh, in space. And and I'm told that one of the satellites is able to see a a chewing gum wrapper in a drain in New York somewhere. I mean, you know, that's just crazy to think that that um, that aircraft, flight MH370, just completely vanished and there was no more said about it. That, that, and I think a lot of people know when something strange has happened it's not because it's a conspiracy theory or because you know people are made to think that there's a conspiracy behind this um i think people generally a lot of the good public do know when something strange has happened and of course then the authorities will come in and whitewash the whole thing over and what they see on the news as you said mark and i you know what people see on the news reading the newspapers it's just what they believe but yeah, that isn't to them that isn't, it's okay. gospel. Yeah. yeah absolutely totally but we've mm. you know a lot of people are waking up now they're they're realizing you know like the roswell case that's been going on for years and that was the granddaddy of them all um and it took that to blow this out into the public arena and the same with the 9-11 you know because people started digging into it and finding that the what they were being told by the media machine cnn and all that wasn't real it's like the CNN clinton with news Trump. network yeah, yeah, and and it's like with Trump as well too. He actually realised that a lot of the stuff that CNN were doing were were making up lies about him. So uh, even the the top, even the president of the United States has discovered that you know his very own people are trying to bring him down. So it, um, you know, with regards to a lot of the stuff that's going on, I would say people are very clever and they know when something's going on that that it is not what what the public are being told. Uh, hold on a moment. I must apologise again for the Gertie noises coming from the background. Well, thankfully, we're not really hearing her, so... Uh, well, the Paranormal UK radio... Mascot. Uh, British Bulldog mascot is <laughs> out for the count. Good. <laughs> In the armchair. At least she's not playing with her metal food bowl during the show. Yes, she... <laughs> Mark, you were... Saying also about high strangeness, and um, you know that that's an area that really fascinates me, and um, you know uh, of the of the things that happen, not just the UFO or um, you know the psychic or the ghost things, but a lot of strange things that happen in the world around us. And you know, I'd like you know I, I know you're, we're all interviewing each other, but what what would you consider to be one of the most weirdest high strangeness that you've come across? Well, personally, I'm still looking into that <laughs> for me to experience. But, I mean, there's but there's a lot of high strangeness cases out there that go back for years. I mean, the Bermuda Triangle, I believe, is a great area of high strangeness that they've never oh, yes. been able to explain. Ships and planes going missing, compasses going weird, pilots reporting what they call like an electric fog. Um, there are areas here in the United States... Uh, have you probably heard of the Skinwalker Ranch in Utah? Uh, yes, I've heard of it. Which, you know, there's a great book out there called Hunt for the Skinwalker by George Knapp and yes. and Colm Kelleher. Uh, you you want to read a great freaky book about the strangest things you've ever heard? Buy that book. It's It's insane the amount of weird overlapping activity and that's why we call it high strangeness because you can't say it's ufo you can't say it's really cryptid you can't say it's ghosts but yet you're getting combinations of all of that activity in there along with some really strange like the the one thing that they reported on that ranch are these balls of light Okay, they're like large orbs, bright orbs of light. They're not exactly a UFO. They're not like a a ship or anything. 
uh, and they're small, very small. And yet, they sound rather like the Foo Fighters that were reported along planes in the Second World War. Is that the sort of thing? I would say that's a close, close um, uh, comparison. Yes, you know, and these things acted not only with intelligence, but there was a couple times they acted with malevolence. Uh, when the uh, when the ranch owner before he sold his ranch to uh, Bigelow at Bigelow Aerospace. Uh, who's now owned the ranch for like 25 years and keeps it all hush hush and keeps everybody out of there so he keeps it all to himself but you when the uh, rancher was there there was one time he had his dogs out and these orbs came down low and the dogs were snarling and chasing and biting them and these things baited the dogs they kept going low enough to get the dogs all worked into a frenzy chasing them and led them into the woods and then once they were in the woods, all of a sudden the, the rancher heard these in, this frightening howls of pain and, and fear coming from his dogs, and then everything went silent. So he had to wait till the next morning. He went out looking for them, and he found his dogs. They were just three piles of goo. These things yes. just eviscerated yeah. his dogs for really mm. no reason. Mm. This, yeah. this, this, this account does remind me of uh, something i know we can because we're speaking about the supernatural we can branch out to other areas sure. the diablo the diablo incident with the the skiers in uh, was it russia somewhere there where they uh, oh, they they, actually... the something pass isn't it that's that... right the diablo pass or something the, like that uh, no um Devo oh, i know it's on the tip Devolta, of my tongue Devotlo, oh god i know it but i can't the diablo pass incident yes and that was in the 1950s where ex several experienced Russian hikers and skiers went up in the mountain and you know, up the pass. They were going to ski and it was a holiday and then they were never heard from again. And then when the Russian army went in to look for them, they found them and the entire site. First of all, I don't know if they ever found all of them. They found a few of them and they were like burned um, um, that's right. They, um, they, 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 they had internal injuries as if they'd been dropped from a great height. And also they'd, they must have been disturbed in the early hours of the morning in their tent because they ripped it from the inside. They, they cut it open with a knife on the inside and dived out of the tent with hardly anything on them, were virtually starkers. So something frightened them. But what was reported um, uh, apparently was that these balls of lights were seen by a tribe somewhere off, weren't they, Philip? Somewhere... Some rather the tribe of people had witnessed these balls. Uh, no, yeah, the, the the actual lights were were actually um, radar were caught on radar by the the military, and were heading in that area. And I know that um, the bodies one of the one of the bodies was so badly um, traumatized. I mean, the tongue was missing, the eyes were missing, the skin turned yellow. They virtually lost nearly all their hair. Um, and they had internal injuries as though they'd been slammed or they, it, from, there was no visible signs from the outside on the in, in the bodies, like, but, but all the bones were crushed. So um, that, that was all hushed up by the, by the military. And, and I do believe that, you know, they were in a hurry to get those bodies in, um, uh, uh, in, um, in containers because the bodies they reckoned was filled with radiation. Now, there's been a lot of uh, controversy about that. I read one piece of work from an author who, who was absolutely convinced that the, uh, the, the below zero temperatures had made them all go willy nilly mad and that they just died of hypothermia. But looking at the evidence, there's been a lot of arguments from a lot of the witnesses, and I know that one of the military who was involved in that was so disgusted by the cover-up that he left. And yeah. uh, and I, I think it's gonna be like the Roswell, that case, I think you know now it's gonna be buried in so much controversy that no one's gonna really know what happened. Um, but that was a very, very frightening case. I mean, you, you had all these, these young, Kid, well they weren't kids but they were young adults and they were experts in their field so they, they weren't just going out you know not knowing what they were doing um, but there was a there was a camera that was found within the tent and the camera took this picture of this light and um, and and there was also this thing about their footprints were still found you know within the snow um, so long afterwards and there was no tracks there was no other tracks in the snow to suggest that there were people or anything else so whatever it was must have been some form of, where we can speculate as aerial phenomena um, but that that goes into the subject of like you know I, I know that a lot of people 
um, argue about it, uh, about abductions and that type of thing. So, I mean, it's still a mystery to this day, and but it still fascinates me. I'm absolutely hooked on that subject, like many other subjects that we're all, in, that we're all interested in. Well, yes, but the, the, as we're saying, the balls of light is relevant to what you were saying, Mark, like the dogs, them teasing and then coaxing them away and then killing them. Yeah, and and I don't know. I've also heard recently somebody else trying to pass it off, saying that it was a Bigfoot or Yeti that got him, and I just don't believe that at all. I mean, everybody's trying to find an explanation, and yet the fact that there is no natural explanation or not even a man-made explanation on how these things happen. Um, you know, these these mysterious disappearances or people who disappear and are found... Um, in locations where they shouldn't be. Uh, it, it's very similar to what happened at the Dyatlov Pass incident. There's a case in Pennsylvania that we've talked with some people about called the Todd Seas case, where this guy went out on his motorbike one day and then he disappeared. And they searched for him for a couple of days and they couldn't find him. And then suddenly he appears in a location that was already searched, dead, He'd been dead a couple of days, yet his body was not decomposing. The animals and the, the natural bacteria weren't doing anything to the body. It had strange burns on it. It had. They also found that he had enough cocaine in his system that literally would have killed a horse. So something was not right in that. Now, people now hear that and they go, oh, well, he just did too much coke and died of an overdose. No, it was physically impossible to get this amount of drugs in this person's system, uh, it was it would yeah. have killed a horse yeah. more than this. This this incident you're talking about is like the National Park disappearances. Philip and I have uh, done research into this in a book written by the brilliant uh, David Polite. Polite. That's it. Well, I, I, where, I wouldn't call where, him where, brilliant, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, the, the 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 point you made was when they they completely researched they searched the whole area and then later on they were adamant nothing was found and then it turns up wasn't there someone in a tree Philip that was found in a tree well there was a case where they uh, yeah I agree with you I mean D David Polite isn't saying everything he won't reveal what he thinks this is and i you know and and i know that he's done his his best as a as a serving police officer um in to the investigations of the missing people around national parks and not just in national parks they happen all over the world and everywhere um but there was a case where they the, the, the a search team had gone out to look for this guy who'd gone out he was going to go out shooting and he said goodbye to his wife and his kids and he went out in the truck and uh, then he didn't come back and they sent out a search team and they searched the area everywhere. And then, of course, what they found was that one of the, the bloke's boots was was h hanging high up in one of the trees, so high there was no way it could get up there. I think that's and the then, Todd Sayers case, isn't it? Yeah, and they and they, they found his body <laughs> in this... this, 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 this um, in, it, within this copse that was so hard to get through to. They had to use drilling yeah. machines and everything to get his body out. And and it's it's very much like that case. I can't remember the case, but do you remember that thing that came up not long ago that made YouTube big, where that Chinese or Japanese woman was found, that she disappeared in a hotel, and then she was found in the water tank, and they had to cut into the water tank to get mm -hmm. her body out, because they couldn't, they didn't know how her body got into the tank. Yep. I Did remember you hear that. about that case? You yeah, remember I, it. I yeah, you it. Remember. That was a sealed tank, was isn't it? That's right. Mm. Yep. And they have no idea how she got there. Um, no. Well, to begin with, she was in the in the in the um, you know in going in, into a lift, and there was no one there, and and it was like she, she was, was she was acting very peculiar, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. and they, they they passed it off that she was like on drugs or something, and she wasn't, and then she disappeared. It was like she was fighting and arguing with someone that wasn't there, and then all of a sudden she disappeared. They couldn't find her, and I think this was a few days later, and. I know it sounds really gruesome, but, you know, when people were turning on their, their water to get water out within the, the hotel, it was coming out with a, you know, very strange substance. But it was because her body was decomposing inside this water tank that was virtually sealed. And the fire, fire crew had to actually, um, um, you know, um, cut their way into it to get her body out. And they still, to this day, can't work out how that happened. That's another case of real strange, strange, uh, um, high strangeness. Can, that, you, can know, you imagine if you. you were like, showering or brushing your teeth with that water oh god oh. no i couldn't oh <laughs> no 
No. Yeah, uh, these types of, of high strangeness events that just have no explanation fascinate me. I mean, I mean, there's areas like these balls of light, which are, are very, they're seen a lot. They're seen, there's in, um, where is it, in North Carolina, there's called the Brownsville Lights in the mountains there in um, Brown, I think it's Brownsville, North Carolina. People go out there almost every night and watch these lights appear above the forest and dancing around the mountain, and they have no idea what they are. They can't figure yeah, it out. They're uh, very common here as well, aren't they? Uh, many people have seen them here in England. Um, I yeah, have... I, I, sorry, Mark. Go sorry, I, 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 I think that you know these things are seen coming up out of the ground. Um, and I and I do un, do know that during the Second World War, the the famous Foo Fighters that were observed by a lot of the Allied, is these balls of light would uh, follow the aircrafts. And on one occasion, one of these balls of light went through the craft, and one of the crafts, one of these bombers, and and absolutely petrified the crew because it was like as it came through, it seemed to distort all of the light and energy, and it it just passed straight through the the actual um, aircraft itself. And of course, both sides were wondering, you know, whether or not they had some form of secret technology, and both were denying it. And and it appears to me that these orbs of energy or consciousness. Um, a lot of them don't really operate on a, a friendly level. It's almost as if they keep themselves distanced from us, and it's almost as if they want to play in a, in a very dangerous way. I mean, if you're you're following aircrafts in World War Two, you know, what are the crew going to make of these? You know, you know, it's any wonder that no accidents had occurred because. And there's been other uh, documented cases where these lights have chased or you know disrupted navigational equipment in aircrafts. And you know, and, and you know, harass them. And I think that was the case in Australia, wasn't there? Where there was a young pilot that went out, and he was on the radio saying to the air, air tower that there was a UFO over him, and uh, this thing had been observed by people who'd been walking along the the beach and on the on some of the cliffs there, and they saw his small aircraft. I can't remember if it's a Cessna aircraft that he had, and that this object, and then he disappeared. They couldn't find anything of his body or the craft or anything. They sent searchers out to look for him. They couldn't find any trace of him. And what's really sad is that his father still hopes to this day that he will walk through that door. I think he was only about 19 or 20 or something. Huh. Now, um, Irene, have you seen these balls of light in your valley? Because I know you have a lot of things flying around your, your section of uh, Wales there. Well, no, I haven't seen any. But low down, you mean? I don't know. Low down in the sky, just something like the balls of light. I I've seen I rem- stuff really high in the sky that I can't explain about, but, you know. <laughs> but no, I haven't seen anything floating around in the garden or anything like that. <laughs> no, you've just seen your, your predator aliens. I, in I, the I was just thinking to myself, I bloody hope I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, well, like no, the, because I don't there, want no was... Foo Fighter out in my garden. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you know the incident with the the plane you said, Philip, that um that uh, disappeared. Well, that's similar to Thomas Mantle, wasn't that one? The gentleman who pursued a flying saucer. Yes, yes it, it was. was. Um, what actually happened was that. Um, You know, Thomas Mantle, that's another case that was covered up by the military. But I will just go go back, Mark, and tell you of the the incident that I'm sure that we've mentioned before. Um, And this was last last April, um, on the 9th of April. And we had been coming back from a meal with some friends. And it was roughly about uh, quarter to 11 at night. And it's a clear starlit night. And uh, my niece and my sister had gone um, home. And we were to, to follow. Um, on, uh, we were going to our home. And basically, when we were, when Ronnie and I were driving back, um, we came, we saw these three lights. There were three of them. And they were, they were huge. And they were like, I thought, first of all, that they were workman's lights. Um, and that someone had propped them up and they were they, they were coming in the direction of where we lived so we kept an eye on them and when I drove under Cow Bridge I saw them and I thought goodness me they are not workman's lights there must be something else and you get that feeling of high strangeness coming up so when we drove round to the corner of our house round the corner there they were they were just sitting in the sky and um my phone was buzzing in my man bag and I decided to leave it because I wanted to get out and have a look at this with Ronnie and we looked up and these three objects were just they were white they were stationary they're in a triangular formation but one 
on the right side was slightly off, so it wasn't a complete triangle. And they made no sound, no noise whatsoever. And would you believe it? There was no one else walking around, coming back from the pub or walking a dog, nothing. This, at this point, was at quarter past 11. By the time it took me to drive back from um, Copal, back to our, our, um, our home here in Kempston in Bedfordshire. And, and when we were standing there watching them, the, the one to, the, to my left started to move towards the one in the front, the front of the triangle, and it stopped to move back. And then they moved into a complete line and then started moving in a military uh, connection. And um, my phone that I had um, at the time kept buzzing. So when I got in and I answered the phone, um, it was my niece who'd gone ahead of us. And the first thing I said to her was, and this has been documented, was, are you phoning about the UFOs? And I won't say what she said, but she said, have you seen them? And I said, Charlie, they've just been sitting over our house. And she'd filmed them from, from the village of Marston Mortain. She saw them on their way towards this area. And she got out of the car and started filming them. So what I did, Mark, was that I came upstairs and I put the whole thing on Facebook so it was fresh in my mind. And then some other reports came through that they, these objects had been seen by other people, but there had been also been a green light in front of them. We did not see any green light. But I was absolutely convinced that this would hit the local papers. And I wouldn't go to the local papers because they know what I'm doing and researching. And I don't want them to pass me off as a crank again. So I left it. Well, needless to say, there was nothing turned up in the papers. And the very next day, what was really bizarre, and I still can't understand it, I don't know, I don't believe it was coincidence, a helicopter the very next day, around the same time, came round our house, circling round and round and round, and then went off. And my, my little bit of a curious mind was thinking, maybe it did that to try and confuse the elements of the time or the day for other people to think, oh, yes, we saw some lights from a helicopter. Do you see? I mean, I, I can't prove that. But that, that was my take on those three orbs. They, 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 were, they weren't threatening, but they were very big. And I, and I kept thinking to this day, you know, there was no form of communication. It was more visual. It, it was more of a visual spectacle um, that whatever was in there wanted maybe, I don't know, why, why were they hanging over our house? I mean, you know, you know when, we're, when, we're, we talk of high strangeness. These things happen all the time. I don't understand it. Yes, but the thing is as well, when we saw them up in the sky to begin with, they had floodlit the entire heavens. It's rather like watching a baseball uh, a game because that's how bright it was. It was absolutely floodlit. And then they dimmed, didn't they? And then they started to move. Yes, that was the case. But as I said, you know, who, you know, most people, as you said, Mark, they don't want to know about that type of thing because otherwise you're in danger of putting yourself in the bracket of sensationalism. And this is the other war that people have when they're trying to tell people, look, something really bizarre and strange has happened. Um, I don't expect you to believe me, but try and understand. And they, they don't want to know. It's like, you know, you're right, Mark. They go back to the same sensational cases over and over again as though nothing happened. Um, Rendlesham Forest UFO incident is one of them, a very clear example, because I had a, a lot to do with that in the later years with Brenda Butler, one of the investigators. And um, a lot of the stories and, and the UFO sightings um, had been seen before and well after the the famous 1980 incident at Bentwaters. So I, I totally understand what you're saying there, Mark, about, you know, people being sidetracked. Yeah, and some of this, these cases, like the, these balls of light, these UFOs, these orbs, whatever you want to call them, they're so mysterious and have been associated with so many different types of activity. I, I've told this story several times. I'll just keep this one brief. Uh, about a, a Bigfoot researcher friend of mine in Ohio who was in the middle of the woods and had one of these balls of light flow, flow right up to his face and hover there for about 30 seconds before, and it was still, it'd still be hovering, but then he thought to grab his camera to take a picture. And as soon as he grabbed that camera, boom, it winked out and was gone. Uh, it showed an intelligence. And what is the darn thing? Uh, there's a, another area of high strangeness that is on my uh, paranormal bucket list to, um, to investigate, uh, hopefully someday, is the Hayubachu Forest in Romania. And this is a section... We're doing of, that one together. Yes, we are. Yes, yeah. you'll be with me because uh, yeah. I'll need you to protect me. Well, I'll need <laughs> you to show you the way through the forest. <laughs> well, that's what GPS is for. <laughs> You could, well, take Gert, you could take Gertie with you. <laughs> <laughs> She'll look after you. Well, yeah. the the um, 
the uh, forest has a lot of reports of activity. People have gone missing there. People have seen these balls of light. Again, the balls of light, they're back and they act intelligently. And they, uh, there's a section of the forest, it's a big circular clearing that nothing grows there. I mean, gr- just grass. There's trees everywhere around it, but that section of the forest, which is up on a hill, is completely blank. No, no vegetation other than grass, no trees, no bushes, no nothing. And yet I know of several teams that have gone there and done some investigations. They had intense experiences. Uh, One, the cameraman on uh, Destination Truth with Josh Gates, and I, I got to meet Josh Gates and talk to him about that case. You know, their cameraman, they were having people sit in the middle of the circle and they had cameras on them to see, you know, just... They'd sit there for a half an hour and see if something happened. And all of a sudden, this cameraman was literally lifted up and thrown 30 feet backwards. And they had cameras oh on. God. Nothing hit him. Nothing touched him. He didn't push himself because he threw, he flew through the air. And he was very shook up. Uh, the Ghost Adventures TV show went there. And they had some intense experiences with high EMF anomalies. They got confused. They were almost befuddled, very frightened. Now, again, people could say, well, it's ghost adventure, so it's fake. And uh, I'm one of the few idiots who don't think they fake. Yeah, I think Zach has some, you know, issues, but I don't agree with what they do half the time. But I don't I think that what they were experiencing seemed to be genuine. And they actually videoed. They recorded these balls of light, different colors, red and orange, Uh, the balls of light moving through the woods and there's nobody else out there. So it's a phenomenon that seems to happen. I've even witnessed it on a couple of investigations. I was at uh, Fort Mifflin outside of Philadelphia, an old, you know, Revolutionary War fort. And sitting in some of the casements, you would see these little flashes of light and they weren't fireflies. There's no insects in there. And yet you see these, they they didn't become big like balls, but they were flashes of light. We caught them on video. There's We're sitting still in there. There's no explanation for what's causing... Well, some people call them spirit lights. Yeah. And well, you know, is a spirit light the same as these big orbs that people are seeing? I don't know. So, I so don't how know. big are these balls of light? Um, my friend Tim in, in Ohio actually videotaped one once. And he yeah. was he, he has a YouTube channel and he's always documenting his Bigfoot experiences. And in this one area he went, and it hasn't happened since. It happened about four years ago, four or five years ago. He was in the middle of the woods with his girlfriend and he records himself. He videotapes himself and they're talking about what they're going to be doing for this investigation. And right behind him, this orb flies between the trees behind them. And what's fascinating is it flew behind some trees and then flew in front of others, which right away uh, totally debunks the idea that it's lights in the distance or a car because it flew in front of the trees. And because it flew behind and in front and behind them, you can get a rough guesstimate on how big this thing was. And it's about the size of a, of a soccer ball, a football. Well, that's yeah. what I wanted to know because when I was a kid, I used to play with balls of light in my bedroom, but they were the size of what golf balls, maybe it's a bit the, bigger than golf balls. So that it, I didn't register when you asked me if I'd ever seen any, but so they're the size of footballs, these ones that people have been but, seeing. But that's the thing, no, this particular one was I have seen and heard that they can be of all sizes. As small as golf balls, pinpoints of light, uh, as big as footballs, um, you know, they can range in size. Yeah, because uh, uh, the children's literature has captured these because Willow the Wisp, you know, these little fairy lights, they call them fairy lights in the woods, but they're always lights. I know it sounds ridiculous, but this is not the first time this has been documented. Even in literary fiction, people are always putting these little star lights in children's illustrations or explaining Willow the Wisp. So perhaps these things have been here for a very long time. I think I agree so. because um, I, as a as a medium, I mean, when I read for people, I mean, I I I, I can 
I can't prove this, but it's astounded me. When I'm sitting with someone, sometimes I'll see these very sharp, piercing little lights, and they're very, very clean light. Sometimes they're a yellow, sometimes they're a blue, sometimes they're a gold or a white. Now, I do know and I do feel that that type of energy that's coming through from what we call the other side is very different from the energy, Mark, that you are talking about, because there is a difference there is a difference in the feeling that you get from them when you're dealing with readings when you're dealing with the psychic realm it's a very different feeling that you get from you know these other entities now <clears throat> i know that a lot of people within the religious sects will say that we're all dealing with the the demons but i don't believe that at all i think that these entities these these pure um, other forms of consciousness are are very different from the energy that we're dealing with because we've got to understand that what we're dealing with is psychic is the human part human spiritual part and yet there are other forces on this planet that are operating on different levels of reality so i i believe that you know the the real the real big mysterious one are the, are the big orbs and I know there's a story with um, uh, my cousin's husband who is flat he's very interested in all of this and you know he's got no nonsense about him and he he works offshore and comes back and uh, and he does a lot of work in the back you know in the garage and uh, doing stuff and because they've got a big place and and he actually said that one day I remember it he this he was just doing his work out in the garden it was night it was early hours of the morning about three o'clock I think it was and this orb but just Jump, it just came over this fence, stood in front of him for a moment, floated in front of him, and then shot off. And he was so scared, he ran upstairs and locked himself in the bathroom and wouldn't come out. So, And my Uncle Bob saw these orbs as well, too, going into a big flying machine. And he was very down to earth. And they lived near Caister. And he used to take the dog out for a walk along the beach, my Uncle Bob. And um, he came running back home, and they thought he was going to have a heart attack. And he was as white as a ghost. And he said he saw this great big, huge cigar-shaped thing. And he'd trust me in this. My Uncle Bob was very down to earth. He didn't believe in any of this. The spade a spade, a spade was a spade to him. But he said this cigar shaped craft came out of the sea and he saw all these white lights coming out of the sea up into it. Um, so, you know, these orbs, uh, you know, people say they're UFOs, people say they're a psychic phenomenon, um, or, but, you know, there, mu there must be more You're to observers. them. Observers. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you You're know, um, absolutely. Well, that brings back the the incident that Philip and I saw the the ball the the orb that hovered over our grandmother. I mean, that's about the same size as these Foo Fighters and these will of the Wisp um, lights that are reported. But that was silver. It doesn't matter. I suppose it was daylight, Philip. The some of these um, these these orbs these lights also seem to be directly associated with several different types of activity that can include. UFO activity, of course, aliens or ETs, and cryptozoological activity like uh, Bigfoot. And, oh, yes. you know, people have seen these lights in association with these. I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, like the friend I just mentioned in um, Ohio, I can't shake the feeling that that light that approached him could have been one of these creatures. You know, because I, I don't doubt it. Yeah, yeah because John John Keel wrote a book called Strange Creatures of Time and Space. And I remember having that book. And as a kid, I ravaged the pages in that book. And he, like yourself, Mark and Irene, he was very much of the same conjecture that what we're dealing with is the form of high strangeness, where this form of intelligence can manifest itself in any image it wishes to. Um, and, um, and and he he did a lot of John Keel did a lot of um, you know exploratory work into those areas of the high strangeness as it were, and um, and and even today it's good to speculate because we're all researchers are still left scratching their heads. But I agree with you because where the Bigfoot's been seen, um, most definitely a lot of strange paranormal activity has followed or ensued um, prior or um, after the actual incidents have happened. Um, and I know that some people that have UFO encounters have also witnessed seeing these strange creatures, you know, clambering around on the ground. And then um, when UFO sightings have been seen, the area seems to be opened up for some sort of unusual psychic or, you know, par paranormal activity that occurs for sometimes a short period of time, sometimes a long period of time. So I do agree that these lights, as they were, do carry with them an, an enormous amount of intelligence, but also a lot of confusion for us um, in the long run. And they also seem to be associated with, and when we're talking about these other types of beings, 
uh, we are talking about like even the uh, in the UK you hear about the the, the Celtic fairy lore, the Shay, the ban- oh, yes. the Banshee. You know what are these types of beings and creatures? Um, one of the things that where I'm at here in the, in the uh, American Midwest, I'm really fascinated with getting into caverns and mines. And there's so much evidence of people who've had experiences with creatures. Now they look at these places as being haunted. Yet I'm going into some locations where nobody's died that we're aware of. And honestly shouldn't really have paranormal activity. And yet it does. And when you start looking into the lore of the old miners, it's like the old Welsh miners, they had the Tommy knockers. You have the, um, the, the, the fairy lore, which is not the Disney fied fairies. The little Tinkerbells are the darker, <laughs> smaller humanoid creatures that, uh, can be in some cases very malevolent. And, uh, you have the, uh, the, um, Middle Eastern with the Islamic culture, you have the jinn, you have all Icelandic elves and Norwegian trolls, and uh, in the U.S., the little people they've talked Cornish about. pixies. Cornish pixies. <laughs> I say that every time. <laughs> he always forgets the Cornish pixies. <laughs> they've never been high on my list. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be sure, there, Irene. To be sure. <laughs> <laughs> I do think I, I have a feeling that, you know, the more I, you know, all of us have, uh, you know, we speculate and we can draw up on hypotheses. But, you know, it, it appears to me that, you know, I don't believe myself that, they, you know, a lot of them are spacemen. I don't believe it. I think that what we're dealing with is another form of higher intelligence, a higher consciousness that's operating on a much higher frequency of awareness. And I, I don't know whether or not they're studying us or that they're seeing how we react to certain situations, but it appears to me they've been here for a very, very, very long time and much longer than we've been on the scene, I, I believe. I, I agree with you there. And I think that what we're dealing with are intelligences that are as intelligent if not more intelligent that we share this planet with and they may or may not be interdimensional in that they're able to flutter in and out of this reality what we think of as reality which is just one aspect of the great whole of existence that's out there and So, you know, you get, that's why people can't find bodies of these creatures, or at least not often. There have been bodies found, and then they're poo-pooed, like this Nazca, you know, mummy that... Grabbed by the Smithsonian's. Yeah, or grabbed and, and spirited <laughs> away and hid in a vault somewhere. There, mm-hmm. we're, we're dealing with certain intelligences. Sometimes you hear stories that they're, that they're, they're benevolent and they don't mean any harm. Some are like, you could piss off. And if you piss off, God help you, like, like the like the fairy lore uh, in the UK. Uh, even the jinn, you know, the jinn have good and bad aspects to the to the jinn. Uh, Iceland, you know, they respect the Icelandic elves so much that the government will divert entire roads around an area that they think where the elves are living. Because movie companies go to, there's so many big Hollywood movies being shot in Iceland right now. And the movie companies, when they go there, they learned really quickly that they have to make offerings to the elves so that they have a trouble-free shoot. Because if they don't, their camera equipment breaks, they get freak weather, they have all sorts of problems, and it just disrupts the shoot. Yep, gremlins in the work. Yep, gremlins. Yeah, the... Yeah, mm-hmm. the, um, the, the other thing as well, too, is that with regards to these lights, I mean, we've got to pull into question of whether or not they are what we would consider souls, but not human souls, or, you know, um, entities that operate on different frequencies of awareness, as I said before. And, and also that there has been speculation, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, the abduction program within ufology and about the hybridization program. But my consensus on that is if that was really the intent of something wanting to do that, um, you know, it would try to bring itself from its dimension into our physical reality on some level or try to do it that way. 
Um, but this is where a lot of the arguments stem from, you know, not just about the, 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 the UFO phenomena, the nuts and bolts or the other aspect of interdimensional aspects that comes with this, but also about this hybridization program. I know some researchers, they really believe that, you know, they're creating these hybrids to take over the planet. Well, I'm not so sure about that because... Um, my brother and I, Ronnie, have both, you know, had a little discussion about this. And, um, you know, if you're a superior being, why would you want to um, mate with something that's lower than yourselves? If only for the reason of bringing that energy into our physical reality to make it part physically part of this world. So, you know, I do believe that these lights, these orbs, these intelligences are, it would be so fascinating to actually have a conversation with one. And there was also that program years ago, a children's program called Chocky. Do you remember that? Chocky? The, 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 no, that was, that was written by it. John Win John Wyndham, yes, the famous 50s and 60s epileptic uh, science fiction writer, Ch Chocky, that's right. What was that yeah, about? He, I, he wrote, I seem to remember it. Yeah, it was this orb that came to this boy and this orb befriended this boy and mm -hmm. wanted him to help to build something. And, you know, when I look back about, well, John Wyndham was obviously, like most science fiction writers are like visionaries, um, it, it always stuck in my head and I always wanted to befriend this orb of light. They called it Chucky and it came from another star system and it wanted our, our help on the Earth and it could only trust a young boy who wouldn't, wasn't anyone that was really... No, not it not being disrespectful important uh, or wouldn't uh, draw attention to itself so these uh -huh. ideas have been sort of like enmeshed within the minds of writers and researchers for a very long time and also if we go back to going back into medieval times there are drawings and paintings of these orbs going through the sky and um you know that the, there were a mystery to a lot of the people during those those times as well too and i and i also believe that you know this is this is maybe they're trying to make us change to make us aware that there is more to us than just simply flesh and blood creatures that you know that the only way to get through to us through our warring world is to, to make us look and see that there are strange things that we have to take note of and like Close Encounters of the Third Kind the film they actually had to use music didn't they the notes to communicate with the beings inside that craft and I think what they're trying to do is to get us to change our form of communication as opposed to the, the verbal uh, link to a more mental processing level. Because let's face it, at the moment, there's no hope for this world the way that people are well, thinking. What about and crop circles? Do you think well, they're trying to communicate through crop circles? Well, now, I, I'm, I'm sure Mark knows about this, that with regards to the crop circles, I know that a lot of them have been faked, but they can distinguish yeah, the fakes from that we, we know about that. But <laughs> there have been lights seen around them, and these lights are said to have been seen to work very quickly and very fast. Now, um, is it Andrew Collins? He's the crop circleist specialist here in England, um, Andrew Collins, and he actually... <laughs> was approached by an organization that was going to pay him a great deal of money, and I mean a lot of money, to go on TV, national TV, and to say that all of his research and everything about crop circles was faked, but he refused to do it. And and I and he also I wonder why would they want to do that? Exactly. And I think that you'll find a lot of the a lot of this here, here is that he is thankfully alive and that he's the person who stepped forward that can actually vouch for that story. He was approached yeah. by her authorities to ask him to dismiss the crop circles. And then that's when they they pulled out Doug and Dave. I mean, they pulled them out in order to sensationalize this and to make everyone believe in the newspapers. Oh, it's all all the crop circles are faked. But they couldn't work out how Doug and Dave could travel to China or Japan or Australia or or, or Africa. At the or same time, these, yeah. Yes, and that's <laughs> why then they brought out all these people to start creating these fake crop circles to damage and discredit the reality of the phenomena. And yeah, the, but they're never they're never exactly the same, are they? No, and but, also, you know they don't get quite flat enough. No, they don't. And also the Nazca lines was obviously had to have been created from some height or some type of intelligence. Mm. And the same with the crop circles, the amazing crop circles that are done here in, uh, you know, across the world, not just England. But the lights have been seen on quite a number of occasions creating these and quite quickly as well, because farmers will you know, look at their land in the morning or late evening and they'll go to bed and then the next morning they've got some fantastic display of, uh, of wonderful architecture that's being created that would take someone probably days to create and, and still people now look at them and think, oh no, that's just uh, someone's, done, someone's done that in the field. So that's, you, that's again like the UFO phenomena 
whitewashed. Yeah, well, what yeah. they've done is they've planted the seed of doubt so it's enough to distract people from asking questions. It's enough to keep people from saying, oh, the, oh, they said this is fake. I'll go back on my life. I got to go make make money, got to go to work, pay my bills, you know, pay for everything and be a good consumer. You know, Drones. That, drones. We're not asked to think. We're, we're actually... We pride ourselves in Western society for being scientific and looking at things rationally, not like the superstitious indigenous peoples of, of the world, which, you know, now it's coming to light that these damn superstitious indigenous peoples are more connected with the forces that surround us every day and are, are more connected with the earth than we'll ever be. And we're taught yeah. we're taught to dismiss things. Science teaches us, well, y you have to be able to bring it into the laboratory and quantifying, tear it apart and look at it and reproduce it before we'll even look at it. So when you get something like these lights or whatever, well, they can't bring it into the laboratory, so it doesn't exist. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's like you you know the when you said about the you know bogging the people down, um, it goes back into history as well too. Just touching very briefly on this, but with regards to psychics and mediums and clairvoyance, I mean the church has had every every one of them burnt, and I think that was a control mechanism to stop people from understanding that they were more there's more things in heaven quote as there is on earth, so that they could come in with a control factor. So once again, even through all the different avenues of the paranormal, you can see exactly how the system, and I call it the system, has subjugated the masses through varied means. Today, unfortunately, it is technology. Mm -hmm. That's how they're getting us to attack each other. Well, technology and the media misinformation and propaganda. And uh, all they have to do, they don't have to prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's fake. They just have to say it's fake. And they, only, they don't have to scream it from the rooftops. They just say it enough times. People are more than willing to buy it because we've all been... We've all grown up being conditioned since birth to believe in Western values and society. And so it's easy for them to come in and throw rationality at us to say, yep, no, don't look at that man behind the mirror. No, this is the way that's a fraud. You know, believe in what we've taught you since birth. That's that's the way to go. Um, you know, otherwise, yeah, what we got to do, what we got to do then is pull that curtain there back and uh, reveal odds for his true self and and you know the other thing is that most people that have have woken up to to this they seem to be connected with this or this then energy or intelligence seems to be connecting with them because you know you have to take your hat off to you know all of the researchers and all of the investigators and all of the the people that's really interested in this and those that haven't actually seen them but still have an open mind about them you know, I think a lot of people now in the world are waking up to the fact that something smells rotten and that, you know, they've been sold something that's off. And I think they've, they've become to realize that, you know, it's not what we've been sold. The whole propaganda machine is selling us something that's not real. And the reality is exactly as you, you see it, um, you know, super consciousness, super intelligence, whatever that that level is of what it whatever it uh, takes the form of is interacting with our world and and the lights themselves that you spoke about mark are able to manifest their reality in any shape or form whatsoever i mean you know there, there was a, a a series that was done um and I, I can't remember what it was called now um and i probably will in a moment but it was a box set that i had american one and of course you know it went through the whole of this abduction thing through through families taken that's it, it was yeah taken, taken which was and, a uh, fictional show it, yes yeah, and, it, and you know, there was a bit there that I always remembered and always stuck in my head. It was, I think it was the very first series where the little boy is, like, talking to a big rabbit. And the little rabbit, the big rabbit takes him outside into the dark from his bedroom into this treehouse thing in the garden. And then it all changes when this treehouse turns into a UFO and starts gradually going upwards. So, you know, even the film producers and the writers of those are, even are aware that this, this phenomena could, can take on different forms, shapes, or different different uh, levels of awareness, as it was for us to uh, understand it. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a uh, there's another film that I absolutely love that demonstrates indoctrination. Indoctrination is Arthur C. Clarke. Now I've read Childhood's End about five times. I absolutely love his book. I think it's a masterpiece. And when they produced uh, this Childhood's End as a mini series, which I have, and I've watched it twice i thought it's quite ironic and quite beautiful that the aliens arrive and 
they communicate with the people and uh, they're very benevolent and they're trying to put the earth in its place but the aliens won't show themselves and eventually when they're pushed and pushed to uh, reveal themselves <laughs> when uh, the leader of them Karelin shows himself he's actually in the form of the devil and I think that's quite beautiful how Arthur C. Clarke has used our indoctrination of this incident which occurred to, to demonstrate just how a s f set we are in our ways how people couldn't accept him because of what he was and yet he was a very it's like a granddaddy sort of figure he was a really nice chap mm -hmm. but um that's very interesting what you were saying philip about um being indoctrinated with uh, these uh, these uh, beliefs and things i think arthur c Clarke portrayed that quite beautifully as i said i've read his book many times and the film i absolutely love not everyone loves the miniseries but the fact that even if they arrived and they looked like him there would be doubt uh people will cast aspersions because of what he represented so it's all to do with how we are shaped what we believe in what we're taught and what we're brainwashed into believing we're brainwashed into believing we're brainwashed into dismissing things out of hand you know yes. we're, we're yeah. taught that money is king buying is, and money is power you have to do certain things with your life get a job work your way up screw other people <clears throat> in the process everything has to do with money 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 and power and yeah, and hand it over and hand it over yep and, yeah. and, hand and, it and over. when you think about it our money is not even real anyway it's fake and they <laughs> they hand out slips of paper and they say yeah this is worth that it's mm -hmm. like in the old days at least they had gold and silver uh but now it's like nope nope it's just paper and we tell you what it's worth uh, yeah, and they, you, they 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 take you into a they take you into a room and they say how much do you want to borrow as a loan and they write out five thousand pounds and that money is created just there in thin air completely in thin air mm -hmm. um, and I know I've read a lot about this where you know then the, what the banks do is that they made that money up they've just created it and that you borrow the reserve that they have in the bank to take money out and they've got that and the interest on top of it great every <laughs> no wonder <laughs> the banks are laughing yeah they get. Getting back to this, um, this ir the irony of the devil um, uh, um, revealing himself. Well, if they came out as angels, I'd be very suspicious, Mark. Oh, yeah. I would be very suspicious. I'd rather, I'd rather trust the devil in that respect because of their true nature than I would angels coming out oh, of it. True, that's close. the irony. That's the irony of it. And, and that's a conversation for another day. I think the devil got a raw deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's> Personally. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I think what we considered the devil or Satan was actually trying to help and not hurt. But you know what? That's another that's another uh well, the devil's yeah, in you, you Mark. You you, you <laughs> yes, don't want to be invited down to the Bavaronian Society, Mark. Well the Illuminati will get you down there and they'll be converting all of us quickly, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, not bloody likely. Um <laughs> yeah, you know, you mentioned earlier uh, and we had, we touched on Rendlesham. You know, we mentioned earlier about, you know, the researchers and uh, all the people out there doing all this work. And what, you know, that used to be more the case and now what they've done is we've talked earlier about this divisiveness that's going on out there and people oh, yes. turning on each other. And yes. I think that this is something else that has been orchestrated to totally destroy any credibility whatsoever in the ufology in paranormal and cryptozoology just like they've done in politics just like they've done you know with nations and dealing with each other you have and and we're i'm not why, why would it be happening after all this time then mark because now is, why would they want to discredit it after all this time the, are you talking about the powers to be that discrediting it or turning it so it gets discredited? Yes, yes. Well, why I after think the all this time? Why? Well, because they've been pushing people towards this for years. This is what I talk about, which is societal conditioning, which they've been pushing mm -hmm. more and people to be more and more radicalized, more um, less open to new ideas or to diversity. They scream diversity from the top of their lungs, and then, but in practice, they they preach divisiveness and teach divisiveness there is no diversity anymore they and they also don't want information getting out there and getting totally soaked up by the mainstream the the regular people if the rest of us who are dealing with this are looked at as kooks 
We're 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 frauds. We're hoaxers. We're nut jobs, because they don't, you know we're the fringe. If the, if can you imagine what would happen if more than half the people on this planet actually really came out and started believing all this stuff, the powers that be would start losing control. We would stop spending the you know yeah. devoting ourselves to money. Uh, like we do and power because of all these other ideas that there's a spiritual idea behind it all it shows that we're not alone there's more to the universe than we think that something that religion can never satisfy where politics could never satisfy get you know being a billionaire will never satisfy it but they want to keep well, us i in- think to think we're the we're the only planet with um Life on it is absolutely stupid. Well, it is. You know, there's a big universe out there. You can but tell you know, us little old, um, in, uh, little old England, I was going to say. Well, this look, little old world is the only planet with you any life on it. The big new, one, other, one other big news story that came out this week is supposedly Anonymous came out and announced that NASA was going to make a big announcement this week yeah. saying that... How many times we heard that one? Aliens are real. And, of course... It distracts people just enough until when it doesn't happen. What does that mm. do? It reinforces in people, yeah, there's nothing out there. They, 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 get, they get built up. They get their Very expectations clever. raised, and then those expectations are dashed. You know, how many times did they say, oh, we found something on Titan, Saturn's moon. This is incredible. Yeah, yeah, we found, <laughs> wa- yeah, we found water. Big fucking deal. You know, I, you know it's... Yeah, I, I ju- I, I've known all along, and I think a lot of people, that NASA is just a front for the uh, uh, apparent space exploration program. And, and this leads into the divide now. But a lot of researchers um, are coming to the understanding, as they have for many, many, many years, that there is a, um, a secret space program, a black budgeted yes. space program that is separate from from what the public are given. And I know that a lot of the scientists who were involved, even going back to this, the most of the German scientists that were brought over to, to America to work for NASA, Project were Paperclip. actually de- yeah, were, were dealing with a lot of other operational stuff because um, most of the researchers and scientists today still can't believe that we're using fossil fuel to get rockets into space. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, I, and I do believe that, again, um, you, what you said was an absolutely wonderful weapon to use against the public. Build the hopes up, then dash it. It's just like the, just touching briefly, won't mention it again, really, the Roswell case with that alien, that fake alien autopsy. Everyone all rushing to see it, to watch it. It's all in the newspapers. Oh, and then, oh, let's, fake. let's, yeah, and then let's say, and then let's drop it all. A big bombshell, oh, it's all a fake. Don't believe in it. So that would, you know, bring the hopes up and then disarm the public and totally discredit you know, the, the belief that this is happening. And they do it time and time again. They keep putting a nail in the coffin, much, you know, much more, many more nails than we can get in there. And, and I agree with you. I heard all about that. They're going to make a big announcement. When it comes out, it's a load of rubbish. What people should really understand is that there is a real space, a black space project going on. And it's been going on for a very long time. Yes. And that's, that's why that they, um, they try to, with the satellites that's orbiting our planet, they cut the life feeds now. They don't want people seeing what's really going on up there. Yeah, on the International um, Space that, was Station. Was that the plonker dressed up as Guy Fawkes who announced that? Is that the plonker they've got dressed up as Guy Fawkes? It's yeah, all there's, shade. there's a lot. That's the whole anonymous, you know, they're the guys who have, they've exposed a lot of things, a lot of corruption. They're, they're a hacker group. And, uh, you know, you can't really take well, they them. They do a lot of good as well. They do do I've, a lot of good. I've always liked they've, them. They've done, they've done a lot of good but, where ISIS is But concerned. here's the problem. They are anonymous. You don't know who these are. And so how easy would it be for the uh, FBI or CIA or other government agencies to put out their own anonymous video and you have no idea who it is? It's guys well, I behind... wasn't going to. I was. I, I wasn't going to reveal any of that to you, Mark. Really, to be honest with you, but yeah. uh, I don't want to say anything. Yeah, <laughs> I'm only joking. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you know, I mean, there, I agree on the secret space crime. You're going to tell me that we went to the moon with 1960s technology, and they're saying now they've actually had some very real scientists come out and say, and now and work for NASA say we don't have the technology now to get to the moon. What? Oh yeah, I've seen all that. We, we, I, I, we went. A we went in a freaking. Well, uh, and, and they've got Edsel. the problem of passing through the Van Allen belt as well, what they call it, the radiation belt. They've got to figure that one out as well before they get to Mars now. Yeah, yeah. It, it's all <laughs> it's all lies. It's all BS. 
you know, because they already have the means to do it. Why do you think NASA stopped going into space? I mean, it's so lame now we catch rides with the Russians, who's supposedly our enemy. Thank you very much. Um, we catch rides with the Russian. We don't even have things to get our the Americans into space anymore. We, we, we stopped it all. And where's the public outcry? Well, they, people have been dumbed down and conditioned to stop thinking about that. Think about what's yes, happening here. Think the, about going yeah. and making money. Think about going, yeah. you know, making this this these corporations rich. Keep using yeah. fossil fuels, 150 year old technology, and they're sitting there telling us that they can't do any better. Bullshit. You know, absolutely. It's, it's like the they've decommissioned the space shuttles, and of course, most people. And would you believe that most of the public actually believed those space shuttles went into deep space? They didn't. No. They were sitting just above the Earth's stratosphere. Yeah. And the same with the Mir space station as well, too. They can't go too far because they'll start to get radiation. And of course, this is the whole, whole thing they fed into the media machine to make people say, "Oh, it's too dangerous to go out into space. We're having problems." And now they're going to have. Now what they're trying to do is cover their tracks with regards to the moon landing. Yeah. And and I know that also that Neil Armstrong did always look like a broken man when he was being interviewed. I don't care what anyone says, that man looked broken. And if he was the first man to step foot on the moon, as was alleged, then, you know, or either that or he saw something or experienced something that shattered his com his whole concept of what it means to be human. I mean, I've always believed that myself. Well, I mean, his partner on the moon and oh my God, I'm having the world's worst brain fart right now. Uh, the gentleman, it was um, Neil Armstrong. Buzz, Buzz, Aldrin. Buzz Aldrin. Buzz Aldrin, thank you. Buzz Aldrin, the second man on the moon, who has been a huge a proponent of alien life on the moon and elsewhere. He says they saw UFOs up there. And I think that what crushed Neil Armstrong, he was a very private man and he stayed that way all of his life and and even even buzz aldrin it hasn't been until the last few years he's really come out and you know people say well they fake the moon landings i mean he punched a guy once for getting into his face for faking the moon I, landings. I saw that and, and i think they must have yeah i think very quickly i think what happened there is that they either went there and they made a doctored version for the public and they had the real version uh that's the other theory yeah i think what they did is they made a fake version to show that if we that if the if this if it did fail then they can at least bring out the footage and whatever to show to be that we beat the russians it was purely for cold war but i yeah. think i i, I agree yeah. look i i'm a film guy I study film. I'm a big space nut. I study space. Those films of those astronauts, it's real. They're on the moon. They're on the moon. There's so much that they can't fake in a studio, especially with dust being kicked up and it settles without hanging in the air. Um, and the way the lighting and the shadows, everything was is, I believe we went to the moon, but we stopped going to the moon. We scrub missions from going to the, further into the moon. And then people stopped caring. And then they've kept us here on Earth for so long that now people don't even, you know, we have an entire generation that's never been in space, that's never been beyond low Earth orbit. And so they don't care about going to these places. It's not exciting anymore. They, if they want to go in space, they go and watch the next Star Wars movie that comes out. That's the limit <laughs> of their imagination. And yet, do you think they were warned off the moon? Do you do you believe they were warned off the moon? Mark? I don't know. I've heard that story that we've been warned off to not go back, but I also think that we have a secret space program that we have the capabilities of anti gravitational flight that can go oh, yes. to the moon and Mars and elsewhere, and we don't need these big rockets. So they're diverting the money into other programs and black ops programs and the secret space program, and they're doing what they want in secret because they don't want the public knowing what the hell they're doing. I mean, you even... Philip, have... Phil, sorry, darling. Carry on. No, no, go ahead, <laughs> Philip. You were going to say something. I was just going to say, if they weren't warned off the moon, they just discovered it wasn't made of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted Swiss. I like that. Swiss, damn it. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you know, it's, you know, you have other people. There's uh, people like Andrew DiBasciago, very controversial guy. And yet he has been telling a story for years now that he was part of this Mars Jump Room program working with MK yeah. Ultra. 
Now, his oh, story, yes. when you first hear it, it sounds insanely fantastical and BS. But when you take the time and listen to it, excuse me, I had a mute there, I coughed. You take the time to listen to his story. It never changes. He's always consistent. He gives, and he's got other people. That yeah, but he, if you tell the same story over and over, you are going to never tra- change it. It won't would, change, and you will be consistent. If you're if you're a liar and a pathological liar, and you want to keep people interested, you change the story and make it better each time. And that's where liars usually get caught. It's the people telling the truth that usually remain consistent. And again, well, I, I'm not. Well, I'm just thinking about one where somebody saw a Bigfoot down by a river. Yeah, that well, story never changes. No, it doesn't. But you know, we know he's full of shit in, in other ways too, because we caught him. Anyway, <laughs> we caught him. <laughs> the enough, um, enough, enough, enough for. <laughs> but it's also that story as well. Too, there's um, with regards to the secret space program. And there's quite a few books coming out now, and they they've um, actually uh, a lot of the uh, the people that were involved in these operations. And some of them have come forward, and and uh, you know, I think it was the creator or the the chairman of McDonnell Douglas that said that we have the capability of taking ET home. And, um, you know, I really believe that. I believe that we've had this technology for a very long time, albeit in a secret sect and the public don't know about, which you've mentioned, Mark. But a lot of these stories are coming out. And when, when you look at the book reviews of, of these certain books, I've got one of them here somewhere through my collection. I haven't completely uh, read yet. But, you know, these people are actually, they actually are stating that they have been to this other world, the planet Serpo. And um, and that they've integrated with these aliens, and you know, and they wanted to come forward. Now, once again, you know, it's it's kind of like you know, very hard for us to believe because I, you know, I I, I because we've been programmed to believe in uh, in what we've been taught. It's very hard to get our mentality out there. But I am beginning to believe most definitely, and have for a few years now, that there is definitely a secret space program, and that a lot of all these uh, secret uh, experimental crafts, anti-gravity propulsion-driven crafts, um, are you know are used. Now, a lot of the other interesting thing about the um, the crash retrievals that's happened around the world is that many of these bodies of the, the the creatures that have been found, they've stated that there's something that's covering their body, like a tight mesh type thing to stop them to being from being crushed inside the craft as they're making their fantastic moves. And it wouldn't surprise me at all that, you know, that the military themselves have created these these beautiful and wonderful crafts that's able to do to do just that. Um, so I totally believe you, Mark, um, and I'm well behind you in the fact that, you know, there is definitely a secret space program going on. Well, there's so much, there's secret technology, period, going on that they keep from the public. We mentioned several times tonight, we're still on fossil fuels. We're still on coal-powered plants, nuclear power that's so dangerous. We have all these antiquated technologies, and yet... You know, they're, they're trying to convince us, well, we can't do anything better. Well, the fact is Nikola Tesla did better and he got uh, sh- yes. he got shut down by Rockefeller because they weren't going to make any money off of it. And that's why we're still on oil. That's why we're still on gasoline. We're still on electricity being piped into our homes at outrageous prices to pay for the all of these companies that are in it to control us to make a buck i mean i can get on another rant about how people who are trying to go off the grid and be totally solar and they got well water and and they are not on any city services that many towns are going in and pulling their um certificate of occupancy and evicting them from their own homes because they say they're not fit to live in because they're not hooked up to city water city power and all that so you can't even own a piece of property and live on it without the city coming in say no you have to be connected to all these services and you got to pay all out to all these people you know or that's right i said to philip that when all the resources are depleted you watch they'll have something quite miraculously at hand yeah well it's all about money and power that's what's keeping this world going the way it's going and they keep us stupid and dumbed down and cause this divisiveness so that people don't think for themselves and continue to buy their toys buy the buy the gasoline go and work their stupid jobs that keep make these companies make all the money 
I'm beginning to sound like an yeah. anarchist here. And I no, know, no, but... no, I agree with you. Absolutely, absolutely agree with you there. Well, you know, we, we got about 20 minutes left, and the one thing I wanted to shift over to, because we mentioned it, this is part of this divisiveness. And one of the things that's going on is they they are absolutely discrediting all of the work we're doing in the paranormal, in ufology, cryptozoology, uh, by these frauds and fakes. And now it's simply the accusation of frauds and fakes. Uh, I was going to mention, and we got sidetracked, there's the Rendlesham Forest case, okay? And yes. which is a famous case in, in the UK of these American servicemen for a couple of different nights seeing these UFOs land in the woods. One of the guys, Larry Warren, who's told his story for years since the 1980s when it happened. And now, just within the last couple of months, there has been this campaign to destroy him by saying that he admitted... I don't, I don't think it's the last couple of months. It's been going on a couple of years. It's really made headway in the last couple of months. Mm. That, that he came out supposedly and told somebody when he was drunk that he lied and made it all up. <laughs> and, yet, yes. there, and yet, there's no proof that he lied and made it up. He's been consistent telling the same story for 30 years, and now it's just coming out. That, and so many people have jumped on the bandwagon to throw him under the bus. You've got Nick Pope throwing him under the bus. You've got Peter Robbins, who co-wrote the book with him, left at East Gate. And now even Peter Robbins has disassociated himself from him. You have, yeah, we've, we have met them both. Some many years ago, we met them both. And... You know, it's, well, I don't know anything. I don't know them, so I'm keeping out of it. I know Peter Robbins. He was a very, very nice man, very nice gentleman. And I'm not an expert on the Rendlesham case. I can't sit here and quote you every little thing that happened in the Rendlesham case. No, but, I'm not either. We're, we're not. But I smell blood in the water, and it's to me it seems like it's fake blood. It seems like some people with an axe to grind... Uh, one person in particular who I think just came out and made up this story to destroy him. And and the reason I lean towards this is because we, we Irene and I, have seen this happen before to other people we know. It's, yeah, we've seen, we've seen it happen many times. But the point is, in this particular case, we don't know about the... I don't know anything about the Rendlesham Forest case, hardly anything at all. I don't know who these people are. But, and uh, well, but he, I, I've, um, I, 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 you know, so there's yeah. always two sides to every story. But here's my well, point on that. Let me let me finish this point. My point is on it is, it doesn't matter who's right. The story mm -hmm. is out there. It's it's a, once again there is a suggestion that it's a fraud and a hoax. So the whole Rendlesham incident, which is considered UK's biggest UFO event, yeah, is it's now, down the drain. It's now down the drain, and nobody will want to take it seriously anymore. They've successfully discredited it by say, by calling this guy a fraud and a liar, saying he admitted that he lied to somebody, and the and and I've heard several people say, "Oh, the proof is overwhelming." Okay, well, where is the proof? Show me the proof that he, this guy so, lied. But, so uh, actually but, we might as well wipe, wipe the story of Rendlesham Forest right off the map then yeah. because it just... guess And guess what that does? Well, it's no yeah. good anymore. But Not to anybody. But guess well, what? Uh, I mean, watching the, uh, watching the pr many programs based on it and reading the books, something certainly did happen there. Well, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It, it, something unusual happened there. They have the proof of Colonel Charles Holt and the others. So I do believe that something unusual yeah, happened there. Yeah, I know, there. but now it's been destroyed. The whole story of it has been destroyed. Yep. Yes, but it they might do with as well not else, exist yeah. anything anymore because it will never be taken serious by anybody. This was character... Yeah, all over again. character and that's, a, that's yep. a shame. It Ca is a shame. Character assassination. That's all we had. Yeah, all we had really was Rendlesham Forest. Yeah. But it's character assassination. They've muddied the waters. Look what they did. Look, and I'm going to use a political argument here. Look what they've done with Trump saying he colluded with Russia. And now it's coming out yeah. that there's no proof. But you've got half the country out there right now believing he colluded with Russia who are supposedly our enemies when they're not. 
and you have half the public out there believing it just because some of the media said so, and now it's coming out the media lied. Do you think yes. those people are going to now change their mind? No. It's burned within their brains. Trump is a liar. He colluded with the Russians. The same thing now with the Rendlesham Forest case. You know, I, I don't have a dog in this fight, okay? I don't, I'm not sitting there saying I believe Larry Warren, but it smells to me like it's all part of this divisiveness campaign that's out there to destroy anything that people have believed in before. And then yeah. that way you look yeah. at all paranormal activity with a sour a sour yeah. attitude. Like, well, I, I can yeah, tell but, you that but, I've but, met but, all of them, and they are fantastic people. I mean, you know, you know, I, I've I've seen um, Jim Penniston, and um, and I've I've met also um, uh, Larry Warren and Peter Robbins, Brenda Butler, and you know, many of the people are involved in that. And I can tell you categorically that that something did happen there, enough to you know create so much controversy. And Georgina Bruni. I, I went on a TV program with her and Nick Pope, and she was she was absolutely wonderful. She wrote a book called You Can't Tell the People. And yes, of course, you'll get all sorts of divide with researchers, and especially authors. I mean, I, I authored the book Sky Crash Throughout Time with Brenda Butler, and that was a nightmare to go through. But that dealt mostly with a lot of the facts of the UFO scene before and afterwards, not just the event. And I've got people jumping on the bandwagon with that book, with mine and Brenda's book, saying... You know, I thought this was about the Rensham case, and that's all they want to talk about. But I can tell you categorically that, you know, that something did occur there. We we even saw something there, the triangular UFO, all those years ago, and that was that was seen under different circumstances. No one wants to know anything about that. You know, that's that's into the garbage with a lot of people. They don't want to know about that. All they want to know about is the UFOs that were seen at the base. But it is recorded that the UFOs that were seen had actually compromised radar and also the weapons um, um, installation site, um, you know, and, and this is quite hefty stuff. Of course, they tried to clam the whole story over because they didn't want to think there was any form of, you know, uh, defense problem. Um, with regards to that, but there's always been a conflicting stories between Larry Warren and also Colonel Charles Holt, Penniston and Burroughs, and that that has always been from the very inception. But I do agree with you, Mark, that something u ugly has just risen up to try and bury it and discredit it once and for all. Um, you know, so I, I I believe it's a very sad case, and I, I hope and I wish that the researchers themselves would and the the, the witnesses would just come together to some form of compromise. Um, but it is ugly grounds, and you know I think everyone's feeling quite low about it. Um, you know, Larry Warren, Peter Robbins, and all the others that are embroiled in this argument, this fight to discredit other people. Uh, well, but, I, I believe something really happened there. I do believe something oh, happened Oh, definitely, there. most definitely. But uh, there is also two sides to every story, and the truth will out in the end. That's the way I look at it, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm keeping out of it until that happens then I might read about it. Well, I can tell you that Rendlesham Forest itself is quite a spooky place. I mean, it's had a lot of history in the past of paranormal activity. We, so, we've, we've been there quite a number of times, haven't we, for it many times? Yeah, yeah we, we went out there to research, and uh, and we went out with Brenda. She took us on field uh, tours. We've seen the base. We've been around Bentwaters and Woodbridge and the whole site. And there were times when I, I, I don't want to go into this, but, you know, we were hassled by helicopters late at night following us through the forest when we're the only ones there. And, you know, it's very, very bizarre and very strange. So there is a lot of high strangers around that area. Um, but I, I do think it's very sad that, you know, when, when you, you've, believed in something for so long and I still believe totally that something happened to those troops and Colonel Charles Holt will also testify to that because he kept very quiet and uh, I know that um, you know um, Colonel Charles Holt co-authored a book um, and uh, through the Haunted Skies series that was done um, by another author and uh, uh, John Hansen and his wife and and he he tried to set the record straight with regards so there's always been um a differences in stories and opinions um not only with uh, colonel charles holt but also with burroughs and penniston and also with uh, and also, Larry Warren. 
and also television programmes. And then they, they try to fob it off with being the Orfield Lighthouse uh, mystery. Rubbish. Yeah, that's what they do. Mm-hmm. And they're saying it's a satellite that crashed from outer space and it's from Russia. You see, what they're doing is very cleverly twisting all the facts, muddying the pool of research. That's it's always the way, like with um, the respected Roswell incident, they will just keep doing it again and again. Roswell, Roswell was a, a weather balloon. And then they came out a few years ago and said they were crash test dummies. Yes, and they found out that the crash test dummies didn't actually come into effect until years later after the saucer had actually smashed into the hill. It's disinformation. Sorry, Mark. I was just going to say, I don't believe any research unless I've done it myself. You know? Well, but that's... You have to start somewhere, though. Uh, I believe that... I, I, I agree. I mean, when we when we researched sky crash throughout time, I had a lot of documentation, and even to the point where Brenda Butler had gone to see um, uh, Lord Admiral Helen Norton um, uh, um, at the House of Lords, and and you know this all this stuff, especially about the the um, David Daniels, which was very much a, a case that uh, that happened around Brenda and was involved with the UFO field, was all pushed under the carpet. Yet we have documentation to prove that all actually happened. So again, it's like they're trying to divert your attention away from the, the facts and, and trying to bring a lot of fiction into it to muddy the waters. They, they throw enough doubt on cases. Um, there's the famous Phoenix Lights cases back in the 1990s, where for oh, several yes. nights, those that V large V formation of lights would appear and the lights would appear one by one. Well, the official story was, Oh, it was, uh, flares from national guard tra- training jets training in the area. Yet the, <laughs> yet, you know, the, the people saw the actual craft at several points and they yeah. saw the, uh, even, um, who was it? It was, uh, Kurt Russell, the Kurt, Kurt Russell, the actor, actually flew was flying a plane in the area at the time he recently came out and admitted he was there's a report of an independent pilot who record who reported the phoenix lights turns out now yeah. it's kurt russell he came out and admitted oh it God. recently wow but i didn't the mayor see it as well someone no. some public official well, the mayor made fun of it and he got big backlash for it. He said he was very serious. He put out a report saying, we're going to look into this. And then about a week later, he came out. Yep, we found out what happened. And he brought out a guy in an alien suit and totally destroyed oh, I remember it, it. it, made fun of it. But you know what? That is part. And he came back later and he apologized many years later. And he never adequately explained why he did it because he actually says now he believes the Phoenix Lights happened. Um, but it was enough. This is all part of this disinformation campaign. All you have to do is throw that bucket of water of doubt on something. People see the Phoenix lights. Oh, they say they were flares and the mayor pulls out a guy in an alien suit. Boom. It's instantly discredited. People laugh it off and go about their lives. You know, Roswell was a weather balloon. And then because people wouldn't shut up about 30, 40 years later, then they say, okay, well, now it was crash test dummies. And everybody laughed at that. But you know what? It's still enough for the regular public to blow it off get on yes. with your lives rendlesham same thing now people can blow it off and get off with their lives we've thrown doubt on everything and there's even there are professional hoaxers out there there's this guy tom biscotti i think his name is who's been known he's the guy with the big foot in a freezer okay oh, yeah. <laughs> he was a few years ago he's the guy who constantly makes these big claims, oh, he's got a Bigfoot, he's got a Bigfoot body. And what happens every time? The press comes running out and make a big deal out of him, and then it's exposed as a hoax. And everybody goes, oh, okay. And they, and even the guy, he's like proud of the fact that he's done a hoax. But the media keeps falling for it, and I think it's intentional. They give him the credit, and then what happens? Oh, Bigfoot in a freezer, it's baloney. You raise people's expectations, you dash them, and then people become more and more jaded. They turn away from it. And that way, even if you present yeah. evidence like this mummy in Peru, yeah, there's a lot of questions surrounding it before any of us can take it seriously. But they're already the, the labels hoax, fraud, hoax is being thrown at it because of other people who are involved, certain names, other locations. People don't want to believe it. They want to believe and they don't want to believe because it's easier to not believe and then get on with their regular lives. So do you want the update for that now? Oh, do you have an update you just found? 
Yeah. It says many mainstream reporting outlets are claiming this alien body is a hoax or fabrication. As far as I can find, I, I being don't know who he is. I don't know. It hasn't said. I'd have to go right to the bottom of the article and read right through it to find out again. There has been no official investigation or examination performed of this body besides the team of that Gaia has put together. Although this could be a hoax, so far no direct evidence is to this effect. Right. Because what happens, what you have going here, the disinformation campaign is already out there to make people yeah. turn away from it. Yeah. Now, yeah, maybe they say no other independent scientific effort. Well, they just found the darn thing. They're doing oh. their own research because what happens if they give it up to, for other scientists to look at? Oh, boy, it just disappeared. Yeah. You know, right. if, if, the, right. if it's legit, you know, and that's that's the catch 22. If it's a fake, they don't want to get caught in being a fake. But yet if it's real, you bring it up to the scientist who's who doesn't want to believe it or they have an agenda to debunk it. They'll pull DNA off of it and say, nope, it's human, regardless of what the results really are. You know, I don't trust. It's so hard to trust anything or anybody Definitely. anymore. And that's where As I can. Say in the ex well, I was just going to say that's where I can agree with Irene to a, to a point on her comment that she doesn't want to trust anything that she doesn't research herself. I agree with that because of all the disinformation that's being put out there and people who have so blindly bought into things, they're screaming fakes or hoax. And there are people out there hoaxing stuff. You know, you don't know who to trust, what to trust anymore. It's like the X-Files. Don't trust anyone, Mr. Mulder. No. It's just like the X-Files. <laughs> <laughs> trust exactly. no truth. one, Mr. Mulder. Trust no one. Oh, we've been called the X-Files before now, me and Mark. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. You know, we've... Well, you do a great job, so no wonder. You're, you're, you're Skulder and Mully. <laughs> so, so Iron, you'll have to get running and getting up that, that hill you'll have to get fit for that my lovely oh crumbs yeah I will yeah only a few more weeks and I'm in Italy <laughs> and you can get that ashtray as well yeah buy a new ashtray just, just... but you were talking about lights earlier on can I just tell you a little story sure we got two minutes left so go ahead all right I this afternoon I went out in the garden I got some pot plants out there and one was a bit wilty because it hadn't been raining so I brought it in and I put it on the draining board all right and I watered it I just been out in the kitchen in the dark I walked out in the kitchen in the dark right and there was a light a bright white light over by this pot plant and I nearly shite myself, I've got to admit that, because you've just been talking about these balls, what lights are balls. Anyway, I switched the light on, then I realised it's solar light stuck in the pot, in the pot plant. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do her. <laughs> well, you know, we, we want to mention here before we wrap up um, yeah. that, again, that uh, both uh, Ronnie and Philip have their own show here on the Paranormal UK Radio Network, Twin Souls, and, right. <coughs> yes, which is yes, a monthly show, it. the fourth Sunday of every month. And Ma uh, Sunday? No, Thursday. Thursday. Why did I oh. say Sunday? Thursday. I Sunday. I keep thinking Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. It's another <laughs> brain fart. It's your age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fourth Thursday of every month at 8 o'clock. And um, now you guys have your Facebook pages. Where where can people get a hold of you? I know Philip, you you have your um, your psychic readings, and and Ronnie's been doing some writing. Or do I have that backwards? <laughs> and I'm an identical twin too, so I screw things up all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Did we so lose them? Does. No, yeah, they are. Ronnie has got a page. Well, Twin Souls is on Facebook. Twin That's Souls right. the radio making... show. That's right, and I'm making a new. I'm re re redoing my Facebook page, so it's going to look fantastic with the help of you guys. We're going to have new reptilians on there, so and with Mark's magic that he does with the images, he can really suit them up. So that's coming on very soon, hopefully this weekend or next weekend. Yeah, great. And Philip, um, yeah, I'm working on a new book, and um, I've nearly finished it, and um, you can get me on the, the Facebook or the internet. Just check out the internet about the UFO stuff and the psychic stuff. And uh, and it's all thanks to you guys to, to give us the chance that we have. Thank you, Irene and Mark. Oh, thank yes, you. thank you. 
we you. we love having we you guys on. Loose. You do a brilliant job. And you both too, Scully and Mulder. <laughs> <laughs> the dynamic duo. <laughs> well, that's it for tonight's show. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll be back next week with uh, another great show. So thank, thank you, you for Where can listening. We be found, Mark? And we can be found. Uh, our, our Podbean, our past shows are on Podbean, Stitcher, and on iTunes, and Blog Talk Radio. And, uh, of course, when I you... T- when you tune in to listen to the show live, we're on uh, not only on, on the ParanormalUKRadioNetwork.com website, but also simulcasting on TalkStream Live, TuneIn Radio, and what's the new one again? Uh, Planet FM. Planet FM. All yeah. right. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. Irene, have a great evening. And you lot. Okay, Thank then. You. Thanks, Thank boys. You. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye.